Alright guys, how's it going? I just kind of wanted to talk to y'all a little bit about vintage fishing reels. If you're interested in vintage spinning reels and want to learn a little bit more about it and some of the things you might want to look for, check out this video and maybe you'll find some useful information in it. The quality of materials used in a lot of older spinning reels is very high. The metals used in the gears and the craftsmanship is often superior to those used in all but the most expensive modern spinning reels. Vintage spinning reels are often a little easier to service yourself. Maybe you can just appreciate equipment that was built to last for generations and not just a few years. For me personally, I see fishing as a hobby. I like old gear, I like new gear. I like to experiment with different reels. I also have been on a quest to find what I felt like was the best reel from a quality standpoint for the money. I will get into that before the video is over and I'll tell you the reel that I think is the best reel you can get for the money and it's an older one. Alright, let's talk a little bit about the major differences between modern and vintage spinning reels. Many of the modern reels use infinite anti-reverse. I do like infinite anti-reverse. I've had some of them fail on me too. For me and the way I fish, instant anti-reverse isn't a necessity. Just to clarify, let me show you what I'm talking about. On modern reels with instant anti-reverse, there's no back play in the reel when you reel backwards. As you can see, there's some movement before some of these vintage reels locks the rotor in place. Here's another example. This one has quite a bit of movement in it. The reason why a lack of instant anti reverse isn't a deal breaker for me personally is because I keep my hand on the crank handle all the time. When I'm setting the hook, my hands actually limit the backward movement of the gears and keeps it to a minimum. I've never thought I missed a fish because I didn't have instant anti reverse. Maybe you have, maybe it's really important to you, and that's okay. There's a few vintage reels that did have instant anti reverse. Another advantage of modern reels is a lack of noise. That's a biggie for a lot of people and I'll admit that sometimes clickers can get on my nerves too. Sometimes what I'll do to limit the noise is turn off the anti-reverse. A lot of these old reels that did not have infinite anti-reverse, they use a paw on a gear and you hear it click. You can hear it make a clicking sound while you're reeling it in. A lot of people call these older style reels clickers. The noise usually isn't a problem if you're bait fishing and you're just throwing a bait out and leaving it. Uh, if you're using a lure that requires constant reeling in, the clicking noise might get to you. My workaround for that personally is to turn the anti reverse off until I actually need it. Again, I fish with my hand on the handle, so a lack of the anti reverse isn't going to hurt me. My hand acts as the anti reverse. One problem you might run into to if you don't use the anti reverse, if you leave it off, is if you get snagged on something. If you go and pull that snag free, you better make sure you have your hand on the handle because if you don't, you're going to have a mess on your hands. Your line's going to make a bird's nest from the reel moving backwards. Another difference between modern reels or more modern reels, this is actually an older reel. Uh, but it's it's not really old and this one has a skirted spool they call it a skirted spool because the spool has a skirt what they call a skirt on the outside of it and the rotor is underneath it on a lot of the older reels they use what was called a cut rotor and as you can see the spool goes inside the cup and here's another one you see how the, the spool drops down inside the cup and comes back out. One thing you'll want to keep in mind if you're using a reel that has a cupped rotor is if you need to maximize your casting distance, you're going to want to have that spool at the top of its travel when you make your cast. That way it's not inside the cup. When the spool is down inside the cup, like it is here, if I were to make a cast and I, and I needed to maximize my distance, well, this, this cup will rub on the line and cause the speed of the line coming off the spool to decrease. And that's going to affect your casting distance. One of the biggest advantages, in my personal opinion, to modern reels is 
most of them do a better job of laying the line on the spool as you're reeling it in and most of them also have larger line rollers that helps reduce line twist to me those that's more important than the other stuff I've gone over but all this is subjective what's important to me might not be as important to you and vice versa this is another big one in my opinion and um, it's the ability to close the bell by hand and again this is a, a newer reel it's newer than these other two but it's still an older reel um, and it does have a bell that can be closed by hand um, as you can see I can flip the bell by hand and the reason myself and a lot of other people prefer to close the bell by hand is because if you don't and you just start cranking it if you've got any slack line you could make a loop in your spool which will end up making a bird's nest for you later a lot of the older reels that were cup style reels um, in fact most of them you you had to close the bell by turning the crank handle which could cause a loop and what I do to keep this from being a problem for me personally is after I've made my cast and I close my bell I stop what I'm doing and I pull my line out I, I just grab the line give it a quick pull out and then start my retrieve because what will happen if you don't is a lot of times it will leave a loop in the spool when you're casting later on it could come out as a tangle so you could end up with a bird's nest like that that's my workaround for using a reel that you can't close by hand okay the weight is a difference and it is not it's a non-issue for me but older reels are heavier uh, and it's usually an ounce two ounces sometimes more for equivalent size reels so for me personally it doesn't bother me a bit um, you know if I'm looking at 12 ounces versus 9 ounces I don't care it doesn't bother me I'm not it's not going to wear my arm out or anything like that but for some people it is an issue so it's something you want to keep in mind let me just talk a little bit about the advantages of vintage reels the single biggest advantage of vintage spinning reels is their durability there is a, a very good reason why there are so many reels that are over 30 years old that are still out there and still being used by people on a day-to-day -day basis they were built to last more often than not the quality of the metals they use in the gears is a lot of times superior to what you'll find in most modern reels a lot of the older reels use bushings instead of ball bearings in the main drive gears while the bushings have more friction there really isn't anything to wear out or to cause problems beyond what a good cleaning and relube could solve the real bodies were usually made out of cast aluminum and you can still find cast aluminum bodied reels but they can get a little pricey to me the biggest advantage of cast aluminum bodies is the fact that you can install and remove the screws hundreds or even thousands of times without any issues as long as you don't cross thread the holes it's a little harder to make sure you don't cross thread a plastic or a graphite bodied reel and the threads will also tend to wear out more quickly Vintage reels are also usually a little easier to maintain yourself. They're usually easier to take apart and they were built with the user in mind as being the person who would do most of the service work on the reel. So now that we've covered some of the basics and you're still possibly interested in using a vintage reel, let me tell you some of the things you'll want to consider before you buy. The size of the reel is often a major player in the price of a vintage reel. The larger reels usually tend to be less expensive than light or ultralight spinning reels. There are a lot of people out there who collect and use vintage ultralight spinning reels and there were also fewer of them made in general. With the way supply and demand works, the light and ultralight vintage spinning reels will be the more expensive ones you will see more often than not. If you're looking for a medium to heavy vintage reel, you'll find a lot more bargains out there. In fact, I'd say if you are into catfishing, some of the best reels that you can buy new or vintage are going to be in the vintage market and there's a lot of them that you can get for very small prices we're talking twenty thirty dollars for a reel that will probably last for decades so what features do you want the most infinite and reverse is rare in vintage spinning reels um, there were a few 
that I found in my research dating back to the 40s uh, and there's one here or there over the decades they're they're not as easy to find and that's going to be the hardest thing for you to find in a vintage reel so if infinite anti-reverse is the biggest thing to you you probably will stick with modern reels if silent anti-reverse is really important to you there are quite a few more options out there there's certainly more clickers out there than there are reels that have silent anti-reverse but silent anti-reverse has been available from several different manufacturers over the years if you're wanting a reel that has a bell that can be closed by hand you're going to want to look mostly at vintage scourge spool models um, there were a few cup rotor spinning reels that had a bell that could be closed manually but not near as many most of the ones you'll find were skirted spool models that had a manual closed bell by the way there's one other thing if you are a righty or a lefty on your retrieve the most common vintage reels are set up for a right-handed person who retrieves with their left hand if you retrieve with your right hand you have to look for a specific model that was made to be retrieved on the right side the Mitchell 308 is for right-handed people they made one called a 309 that was made just the opposite to where the crank handle was on this side but this Cardinal 3 has a reversible handle on it so you can reel from the left or the right just something you want to keep in mind when you're looking at the old ones let me tell you a little bit more about the three vintage spinning reel examples I have here on the table this reel is a vintage Garcia Mitchell 308 it's an ultralight reel and they were pretty unusual because they had what was called planomatic gearing in them and what that is is a different way of laying the line on the spool as I reel in the spool moves up and down in increments before completing its full oscillation cycle but you can see the reel pauses in its movement and moves up and down while it's completing its full distance it'll start at the bottom it'll move up a little then back down a little back up a little again back down all the way to the top of its travel before it re repeats that process in reverse the Mitchell 300 and 400 series of reels were some of the easier ones that anyone's ever made to service yourself. To get these apart for basic service, really all you need to do is push the button to remove the spool. Use a coin to remove the screw. Once you get to this point, you're just going to pull a pin, a retainer pin that holds this center shaft and slide it out then there's the shaft keeper this little planomatic gear ring and that's the planomatic gear take the handle off And there's a small screw right here. Remove that screw. Be careful not to lose it. And now your rotor comes out. Once the rotor's out, you can remove the gear from the inside and a lot of times your paw will come out for your anti-reverse so you want to make sure you don't lose the spring this is a race and ball bearing setup here and you can remove this if you want but you got to be really careful or you'll lose the balls out of it it's easiest just to clean it as it is and re-lubricate it right there so that's it Everything's ready to be cleaned up, relubricated, and reinstalled. You can service one of these reels, do a, a basic service on it, really in probably five to ten minutes. 
it's one of the easiest reels I've ever come across to completely disassemble, clean up, put back together, and be back in business. All right, so because of the ease of service, and the fact that these are pretty common and not too difficult to find so the price is good this is a good one to start with uh, Garcia Mitchell 300 Garcia Mitchell 308 depending on what size reel you're looking for a 300 is a good size for a bass fisherman a 308 would be something a trout fisherman might go after the 308 is their ultralight reel and the, the 308 has another reel that's the same size that's called a 408 and the difference between the 308 and the 408 is the 408 has high speed gears I own a 308 and a 408 and they're both really good reels very functional and they will do 90 percent of what you could do with any modern reel you might run into issues with a braid uh, I've never tried braid I always use mono now I'm going to tell you a little bit about this Shakespeare reel as you can see made in the USA um, this is a light or an ultra light size reel it's also very easy to service these reels were a maroon color this one I polished it's a nice looking reel um, this to me this is the best value you can get for your money out of any of the reels are the Shakespeare 2052s and the 2062 which is more of a medium duty reel the 2052s are an ultralight reel which I tend to use more often and the anti-reverse is on on this reel and there's a good chance you won't be able to hear it and the reason is because I've adjusted the spring tension on the paw that does the anti-reverse and I've made it a little looser than what it comes from the factory it's very quiet for a clicker this is one of the smoothest reels I own and the reason for that is because the main drive in the pinion gear is a worm gear setup let me show you what that looks like this is the worm gear setup on the Shakespeare 2052 very simple there's an arm that runs off a shaft that sticks out of the, the main drive gear that arm works the oscillation function very simple setup extremely 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 durable both of the gears both the pinion and the main gear drive are actually hardened steel don't want to use this in salt water keep it away from salt water but this gear setup is a work horse in the larger reel the 2062 it'd be an excellent bass or catfishing reel uh, I wouldn't hesitate to fight a fish 20, upwards of 20 pounds with this ultralight reel I wouldn't lose any sleep over it I know it's not going to hurt these gears I do not own any modern ultralight reel that I could say the same thing for I'd worry about damage to the gears the reason why these worm gear setups are so much more durable is because of the amount of teeth that are engaged at one time on the gear it's real similar to pinion gears on older cars and trucks certain gear sets were more desirable to, than others because of the durability and a lot of that had to do with the amount of teeth that were engaged at one time these reels are just a little bit more difficult to service than the Mitchell I showed you earlier but this to me is the best value for the money I paid less than twenty dollars for this reel to get anything close to this now you're going to spend over two hundred dollars the cheapest modern worm gear drive setup reel I found was about two hundred thirty dollars that's a modern reel that's manufactured today and a lot of people don't like some of the other things about it this is simple it's durable it's extremely reliable and if you maintain it properly it'll be here when your great grandkids are ready to start fishing 
This is a really well made reel. To me it's the best deal you can get on a, on a vintage fishing reel. Super smooth. You won't feel any gear feedback through your handle whatsoever and that's because of the worm drive. Uh, the clickers, the way they come are a little bit loud. I've modified this one somewhat to quieten it down. Um, I've got it turned off right now. But you can see how freely that spins. It's hard to believe this reel only has one ball bearing and it's in the pinion gear. The main drive gear just uses a bronze bushing that runs the length of this shaft here. Super smooth, super quiet when you've got the anti-reverse turned off. And the bell trip is just as nice and clean as it can be. These are great reels. And I, I honestly, I would recommend this over the Mitchell. But if you're just starting out and you need something that's easy to service, the Mitchell is a really nice reel to get started with. Now let me tell you about the best spinning reel I have found for the money. Whether you're talking about vintage or you're talking about modern reels. This is a Abu Garcia Cardinal 3. It's their light size spinning reel. And I use braid on this reel. I haven't had any problems yet with the plastic spool. You can see there's an unusual positioning for the drag knob. This uses what's called a fulcrum drag setup and you won't find a better stock drag on many of the modern reels that are out there and I don't think you'll find one that's even close on vintage reels just stock the way it came. This is a Cardinal 3 and it's not to be confused with the Abu or the Zebco Cardinal 3 reels that came before this one. This one's different in that it has a skirted spool instead of a cupped rotor and spool setup. And it's also got silent anti-reverse. The major drawback to this reel is there is quite a bit of play in the anti-reverse before it catches. That's the biggie. Everything else is almost perfect on this reel. Let's take a look under the hood. All right. As you can see here, this reel is quite a bit more complicated than the other ones I showed you. In fact, this is probably not any easier to service than many modern reels. But what it has that most other modern reels lack is this worm gear drive setup. Brass gears, high quality brass gears, high quality steel pinion gear, high quality brass gears, and it does have a fine tooth gear that runs the oscillation arm for a really tight line lay on your spool. It also has this rocker arm here that's the fulcrum actuated drag setup. As you can see when you tighten and loosen your drag knob this rocker arm increases and decreases the pressure on the drag gears. This is an extremely, extremely smooth and functional setup for a drag system. And honestly, I don't think anybody makes in modern reels anything any better than this setup. That's my personal opinion. I've not felt a better drag setup on a stock reel of, of any sort. What this reel lacks in its ability to be serviced as easily as the other ones, it makes up for, in my opinion, with some really nice features. The tight line lay, silky smooth drag, the worm gear drive, and the silent anti-reverse, the bell that can be closed manually, and how about a little thing, the line keeper on the spool. Most vintage reels don't have that. So if I were to choose my favorite reel for the price of any make, new or old, this is my winner right here. I've picked up several of these and as you can see this one's in bad shape as far as the paint and stuff goes. But it works just like a brand new reel. It's probably smoother than most new reels. 
Um, and I know you're going to get less gear feedback than any but the most expensive reels. So this one's in rough shape. I paid less than $30 for this one. And I've got two more. I've got one that's practically new. It's in the box. I was able to pick up for 40 bucks. That one is actually called a Cardinal C3 instead of just the Cardinal 3. I think they later added the C3 designation to distinguish it more from the older style reels that they used to make. So if you can pick one of these up in this kind of shape for 20 bucks, somewhere between 20 and 30 bucks, you know, I'm going to just highly recommend you do that. If you want to step up in size, they had a Cardinal 4, or it's also called a Cardinal C4. It's the same reel. It's one, it's one size up from this, and they went on up past that too. But the C4 is a good catfishing reel, um, and it's also good for bass fishing, things like that. Um, this one is too. This is my go-to reel. This is my everyday driver, if you want to call it that. Um, it's a really nice reel, highly functional, um, very smooth, especially for a reel that only has one bearing, one ball bearing in it. These are three examples. Again, we got the Shakespeare 2052 here. Best buy for the money, in my opinion. You can get these in really good shape, sometimes even new in the box for, you know, less than 40 bucks. You can get them in good shape for 20 bucks a lot of times with all the paint still intact. This one was in pretty bad shape. I didn't pay much for it though. Uh, that's why it doesn't have paint on it anymore and I just polished it out. These Mitchells, the 300 is a good size for bass fishing. This is a 308. Um, those are going to run you a lot of times for one in good shape around 20 bucks super easy to service uh, it's the easiest one to work on of the three and these cardinals uh, and if you want to go to the cut style cardinals they're definitely more collectible and there's more demand for them and probably will always be more collectible than these uh, the older ones were made in Sweden these are made in Japan uh, not nearly as collectible but extremely functional and very very nice reels that you can get for pretty good prices you can pick these up you know in good good use condition uh, a lot better than this one for upwards of 40 bucks and this one it's in pretty rough shape you can usually pick those up for 20 or so now let me tell you a little bit about finding these types of reels and if you want to get into this stuff your best bet is going to be to look for them in a thrift store. You're going to find cheaper prices in thrift stores, places like Goodwill, Salvation Army, places like that. The problem is, is you're not going to find them there very often. And if they are there, there's a good chance somebody's going to get to them before you do. Uh, a step up in price from that would be looking at places like flea markets and antique stores you're going to find them in there quite a bit and they're going to be more expensive uh, than you're going to find in a thrift store but you can still find bargains from time to time the place you're going to probably pay the highest price and that's because of shipping charges is ebay but man they're everywhere on there and you can find some really good deals if you're patient and what i'd recommend you do if you find a reel that you're really interested in buying is set up a followed search on eBay. You want to follow the search term. Just say you were looking for one of these Shakespeare's. You wanted the bigger one, just say. Just say you wanted the Shakespeare 2062. Set up a search term. Go in and search Shakespeare 2062. And you'll get more results if you leave your category as all. Um, if you define it as simply fishing, vintage, spinning reels uh, in, in your category. Um, you're going to limit your search results and you're going to miss some that show up in in the modern spinning reel section from time to time because people a lot of times don't categorize their listings in the proper way.
so you're going to miss some that way too so I just leave your category set to all search use your search term Shakespeare 2062 in this example and then you you're going to follow that search there's a button on there that you can push to to follow that search and anytime a new listing pops up with that title it's going to give you a notification on your phone or through email and you can go in and see if you can catch one a lot of times people will put them on with a buy it now and it's underpriced and you can pick them up cheap that way too or if you're looking at an auction listing um, you can keep an eye on one if you find one that pops up in your follow search term and it starts out really low you want to follow it you you at that point watch that item and see if you can pick it up uh, snipe it at the last second for a good price that's all I got guys I just kinda want to discuss the vintage spinning reels a little bit and tell you what I found about them on these three specific models that I think are good for people that are getting into vintage fishing spinning equipment um, these are three good ones to start out with uh, you can start with a Cadillac if you're comfortable working on your own reels and stuff it doesn't bother you a bit um, if you want something that's super easy to start working on you know these are the Mitchells and if you want kind of the best bang for your buck and still get one that's relatively easy to work on to Shakespeare that's that's a hard one to beat too you know what if any of you guys fish vintage spinning gear leave a comment below and tell me what your experiences are with it if you got anything to add to the discussion let's hear it and also if you have any questions for me about any specific reels if I don't know I might know a fellow youtuber who does and at some point I'd like to get together with him and do a content share um, but I can point you in the direction of somebody that might be able to help you if I don't have the answer for you I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope some of y'all would possibly consider trying out some vintage fishing gear and and tell us what you think about it